All right, guys. Back home now after working on that Bolaris. Just walking through the cows quick, checking everybody. A couple of my calves kind of got scours a little bit, so I just want to come out and check on them. See if I got to give anybody any medicine or not, but that Bolaris, that's five hours to change a hydraulic pump. And when I left, my cousin was still working on getting that 8700 put back together. Um, and we didn't want to start the Blairs because when we pulled it in, it smoked the shop out in about 30 seconds. So, he didn't really want to start that Blairs until the 87 was done. And the 87 has got to go outside tomorrow and get pressure washed. Uh, before we start doing any prep work, I don't know he might take the tin off it tonight And then we've got another guy who is gonna pressure wash it and try and get that engine clean. We're trying to figure out if The guys want to put a head gasket in that it's my great uncle's tractor his His kids obviously inherit it now that he passed away um, So we're trying to figure out the paint job is something we're doing as a surprise to the family, um, but I know on the video it didn't show up very well how bad that head gasket is seeping on it. So we're kind of trying to figure out what to do with that or if we're just going to clean it up, paint it, and it's going to be an oily pig when it's done. Um, so I know on the video the picture of it wasn't very good with that head gasket the way it looked. But, so the Blaris, I put the pump in and the pump mounts in the bottom of the reservoir. The reservoir on it actually goes all the way up to the hood. I filled it with oil and nothing was leaking after I filled it, so I'm kind of waiting for a call tonight to let me know what the game plan is for tomorrow, what we're going to work on. Um, so hopefully tomorrow I'll get some more footage. Hopefully that hydraulic pump fixes that Blaris. And then we have to go through and do the wiring on it. Uh, the only thing that does work is the tack. We have to use a screwdriver right now to get it started because all the wires are clipped in the dash. So nothing else works. Um, just the tack. We don't know what it has for oil pressure. Nothing. Uh, the customer said that it doesn't have enough hydraulic pressure to even lift this little nine foot hay bind, so we put the tester on. It's only putting out between four to six hundred PSI, and it should be putting out 22, 2300. So I'm kind of waiting to hear back to see if he gets a tester put on it tonight and see how that's sitting, um, and then we're going to have to wire it. Yeah, you saw the tack. Somebody put a clutch in it a year ago. The guy's been starting it this way for a year. Um, whoever put the clutch in, we don't know if they intentionally cut the wire harness or if when they set the cab back on the tractor, if the cab pinched the wire harness. Um, ha some of the wires are melting on it from shorting out. Uh, so it's going to be fun. Uh, you know, it's, I guess that's, that's what our job is to fix, fix stuff. And he didn't want to take it back to the guy that messed it up because he didn't figure it would be done right. So... And I don't know, here's a cat at my feet that just showed up here three days ago, and it's awful friendly. I don't know where it come from. Um, so that's kind of where the Blairs is sitting. It is a customer's tractor. Uh, he bought it used, but it was almost brand new. So that's about all we know. It's had a hard life, yes. I don't know if you saw in the video of the door how it was tweaked. It doesn't latch. Uh, she's a beautiful gem, I'll tell you what. Um, the 8730 my cousin bought off an implement dealership that the transmission, it didn't move. He went through, fixed the tranny on it. Um, got it working, painted it. We're going to put decals on it, and then he's going to list it for sale. Uh, he has many, many other Ford tractors. That one he bought just is a tractor to fix and sell, try and make some money on it. He owns a repair business. Uh, they do a lot of work in the shop. 
and then he also has a fully loaded service truck where we go on service calls fix anything and everything from well heads for the Amish to uh, do a lot of welding for the Amish um, silo unloaders for guys barn cleaners equipment breaks down in the field uh, we pulled heads off of tractors out in the field and fixed them all kinds of odd stuff um, Nice thing about it is it's something different all the time. Bad part about it is you spend a lot of time behind a windshield driving from one job to the next. But so I help him out. It's basically it's just a family business. Uh, with the insurance, it only works that all family members work there. If he were to hire somebody who's not family, the insurance would be like quadruple. It's just ridiculous what insurance costs for employees. So that's just a little bit of background on on the business. It's Badgerland. That's what the name of it is. If there's anybody in western to midwestern Wisconsin, eastern Minnesota, I mean, we've been to Minnesota. We've been almost across the state working on stuff. Uh, yeah, it's we pretty much fix anything. Um, and I had a comment on that somebody wanted to see the four tractors running if I'm over there when they're doing field work I'll try to get videos of the tractors going in the fall when he does custom harvesting I run his combine he's got a TR-98 combine I'll try and get footage of that rolling um, it's an awesome combine um, so yeah that's a little bit of what's going on over at that shop and on my cousin's farm um, yeah, I don't know, there were some other questions too, but right now I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, but we do have that Ford L9000 sitting outside the shop that needs to come in for a clutch. He's going to try and run down and buy a tranny jack for that, just, just because the transmission that's in it is heavy, and we've done them in the past just using floor jacks, and it's not worth fighting. Just go down and spend the $400 on a nice transmission jack, and get it setting on there nice roll it back put the clutch in put it back together so so if there's any more questions i mean send me a you know shoot me a comment or whatever i'll try and either reply to your comments or i'll make a video trying to answer some of the stuff um i'm sure people are getting sick of seeing cow videos but this is a cow farm pig farm crop farm there'll be a lot of those kind of videos Try and get more repair videos. Finished hauling manure the other day. There's maybe a load or two left on the pad, but I got everything covered that I could put manure on without burying a tractor. Out here in the middle, it's there's a lot of standing water. And about the last six loads, I had to go back to the V-spreader. Uh, Somewhere out there I lost two cross members underneath that box spreader. The whole back end fell out from underneath it. Thank God the chain didn't come apart and the shaft is still there. It's all together. So this is probably going to be a winter project. Tearing the floor out of it. Weld new cross members and rebuilding it. So <laughs> there will be another video to come. So yeah. Uh, somebody asked me why I have a box spreader and a V spreader. Um, during the summer with the steers on the lot there's a lot of soupy manure. The V-spreader works really good for spreading any kind of manure on hay ground. There's not big clumps. The box spreader leaves big clumps behind it. Uh, the V-spreader makes a lot wider pat, you know, a lot wider um, spread pattern, and you can spread the manure quite a bit thinner with that. So for spreading on hay ground, it works awesome. Um, it doesn't work the greatest for pen pack. It takes about six times longer to unload. That V-spreader has pen pack in it than obviously the box spreader, but, you know, when the other spreader breaks, you have to use it, so. And the biggest reason is for, during the summer when I got to clean the steer lot, I have to spread that manure obviously on hay grown, so that way it doesn't really kill the hay, it doesn't leave big clumps that will kill the hay underneath the clump and then me end up just cutting with the hay bind again and raking up and baling the hay. So that's kind of the deal with the manure spreaders and right now the box spreaders out of commission. I swear to you in the last 12 years I've bought at least five box spreaders. It just seems like they're just, I'm always killing them. I don't know. I don't know how it happens, but 
that's a lot of the reason why I outwinter the cows. That manure that I hauled out was two months worth of manure from the cows being locked off this field or whatever when it was muddy and then obviously there was pen pack in there from the bulls inside their shed um, and then a little bit of it was from the pigs they're part of the pen but if these cows would have been in there all winter long that would probably have only been about a quarter of the manure that I would have had to haul out and I probably would have killed the spreader three times so that's kind of why I started doing this out wintering deal less manure to haul Less aggravation when manure spreaders break down. But, so yeah. There's the cows. It is starting to green up. Right now it's only about 34 degrees. We're talking rain for the next three or four days. So I might jump in the 64, hook it to the light drag, go out there and try and drag out that manure so it's somewhat level and maybe Friday if it's not raining. Might go out there with the drill and try and seed some oats. Hopefully they'll start growing. The cows can eat on those oats for the next couple weeks. So, so anyways, well, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. We'll get some more shop videos and everything. So, yes, and that's a deer stand. Deer blind, whatever. We're kind of lazy hunters here. We let the deer come out in the field. It's only about a 275 yard shot, but. That's our deer hunting. Me and the wife aren't afraid to shoot long distance, so. Anyhow, yeah, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. And again, thank you everybody for watching.